Hi everybody, welcome to a pop-up live. Um, we're going to try and keep it reasonably brief because uh, the football's on at 8 o'clock, so we are going to try and rattle through uh, a few things tonight and get the camera set up a bit better. Um, right, we've got some stuff that's turned up here at Interesting HQ, so without further ado, let's dive into what we've got here. And first of all, as you might have seen on the timeline tonight, we've got the new Tamiya Ketten Crad, or Ketten Craft Trad, as they've given it its full title here. This is the mid-production one with the round headlight and a few other features on it, some reinforcements and armour. Now, this clearly references Tamiya's original Ketten Crad kit, which came out back in 1974, I do believe. And they've gone as far as almost replicating the poses of the figures. You've got the trooper with the soft cap with the MG slung over his shoulder and you've got the other guy walking behind him. And yeah, they've pretty much gone for that with this with this new kit, which is nice. I like that. I like I think if a company can reference its own history, that's no bad thing. And well, I built the Tamiya kit, the original Tamiya kit, in 1985, and which is actually not long after, not about 10 years after it was released. I can tell you this is chalk and cheese, as we will see as we open the box and actually start going through this, and I'll point out some bits and pieces to you, is, well, the most obvious one, and it's the elephant in the room, is the way that Tamiya have done the the tracks in this. Now, on the original kit, they molded most of the wheels and the inner part of the track as one piece. And then you just glued some of the outer wheels on. That was it. Very similar to how they've done it in the, in the 148 scale kit. This, as you can see, is a little bit more involved. And... If we grab the instruction sheet, it will explain what is going on here. It is essentially, yeah, that. Um, you are creating link and length track parts. Then, and this is the bit I'm, I really want to see how this works. Then you are gluing the rubber blocks individually. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll wait to see how that works. It's Tamiya. It's bound to work beautifully. It's rather interesting here that they say cut off and attach pads to tracks together with their sprue, cutting off the unneeded sprue after pad cement has dried. So you're able to kind of put them on in great big kind of chunks there. Yeah, I'm going to be quite curious to see how this actually works in reality. It's quite nice that you can do the, the rubber pads separately because in theory you can paint them and add them later on so anyway so immediately i think it's fair to say that there are more parts on these two sprues dealing with just the tracks than there were on the entire original 1974 tamir cat and crab kit obviously goes without saying with this uh, with this kit that the molding is absolutely beautiful um it's it's a 21 uh, 2021 Tamiya kit. What are you expecting? So this is going to be a slightly slower build than the original, but consequently incredibly more detailed. Similarly, the uh, the body is broken down a little bit more adventurously than the original. And what I'll do is I'll go and grab some photographs of the original kit because I've got one up in the attic. So it would be good to actually do a comparison of the two should have done that before the show never mind again detail on this is absolutely fabulous it really you know really really is just utterly gorgeous and i'm a big fan of the the cat and crowd it's one of my favorite vehicles i know i always seem to say that everything is my favorite vehicle but this truly is and you also get an engine as well which is rather nice and you can pivot the engine cover up so that you can see all that detail there's some very nice textures on this model and, you know, just tiny, tiny little details, which I hate to say you come to expect this at Tamiya these days, but it's 
it's a feast for the eyes, I think is the best way of putting it. Um, it doesn't look unduly overly fussy. Uh, and I've noticed here that they've linked these road wheels together here. So it looks like it's it's going to be fairly rapid. But as I say, not quite as rapid as the, as the original. But hey-ho, that's what we've come to expect. And you get the three figures, which, as you would expect from Tamiya's latest generation of figures, are simply stunning. For the driver, you do get a choice of heads. I'm trying to find where the driver is. There he is. You do get a choice of heads for him to either look ahead or look to one side. You also get a choice of headwear for the troopers. So you can ha either have the helmets or the cloth caps. Again, the detail on the guns, on the MG and the, the rifle is absolutely fabulous. The folds and the details on the uniforms. Martin Kovac made a very good point on one of his night shift videos. And incidentally, uh, let's all wish Martin a speedy recovery from his uh, bike accident. He said that w when it comes to figure painting, if you can start with a, a very good figure, you've kind of got half the battle done for you. And these are just absolutely stunning. They really are. I mean, I'm, I kind of approach figure painting with a mixture of fear and a determination that one day I'll turn in a half decent figure. But I have to say these just on the sprue, <laughs> they just look gorgeous. And the detail, it, it looks like it's, you know, it's, how can I describe it? It's paintbrush friendly. I'm not, you know, it's not a case that it's overdone quite the opposite it's so beautifully done and so beautifully crisp that you are going to you are going to enjoy painting these pretty much and if we just have a quick whiz through the instruction sheet and <clears throat> there we go that's putting together the the basic kind of body parts and chassis there is a photo etch part for the engine grill, which I'm just fishing out of the box here. Ouch. And Tamiya also include, as you can see on the instruction sheet there, they include a little jig for you to put the part on. I'm just trying to find it on the sprue here. There it is there. Part B13. So there's a little jig there which you then pop the part on, shape it, and drop it into place. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So that's stainless steel. It's very thin, though, so I don't think that's going to be quite as troublesome as a lot of stainless steel etch sometimes is. So I'm just trying to get the decal out of the box. As I said, you can hinge the engine cover up so you can see all the engine detail as and when you get around to painting and assembling that, which is a beautiful little model in its own right as well. I mean, look at that. That's, again, there's probably more parts on this engine than there were in the entire 1974 kit. And then we get to through to the running gear, which, as you say, it's bits of it are linked. I do apologise for my thumbnail. I whacked it when I was uh, out gardening and half of it's come off. So... For anybody who's um, who's into hand modelling, uh, ignore these hands. Um, the running gear, yes, that's, as I say, that's involved, but I'm not anticipating any great problems here. The only reason I, I mention it is because I get a little bit OCD about wanting to make sure I get all the the painting done correctly for the, the rubber rims to the tyres and on these drive sprockets here as well. So I, I kind of... I think it can be done. I, th I think you can. I think you can paint that as as a as an assembly, and actually paint all these as a sub assembly, and then drop them in place with. I think you could probably actually use like a strong PVA for that. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I think I think that's a way of doing it, and then dropping in little rubber blocks. So that'd be interesting to see how much of those, how much of that running gear you can actually paint as separate sub-assemblies then assemble the alternative is and this is something martin kovac does is that he assemble these assembles these into sections 
and then leaves them so that you can actually kind of detach them. So that might be possible as well. We'll wait, wait and see when we come around to that. The motorcycle element, the uh, the front part of the handlebars and the, the front wheel. Then we're just coming around to the trailer. Now, the trailer, I can't remember whether a trailer was included in the 1974 kit. I honestly, somebody out there will, will jog my memory. But you get a trailer, which is nice. Then you get the driver figure, as I say, two heads there. Then you get the MG42 and the rifle. And then finally, the other two figures, again, with a choice of headgear. Usual Tamiya painting instructions, which are very nicely done. Uh, and, and as always, they do point out that there are some sprue attachment points that actually, actually go into the mating area. So they're just always making you aware that you do need to remove those. The deck or sheet itself is simplicity because these vehicles really didn't carry much in the way of marking. Sometimes they carried a little stencil at the rear there, which is all the weights and loads and everything. But in this instance, all we are getting is one decal for the uh, for the dashboard. That's it. I think some people may be surprised that they're not including unit markings or number plates or things like this, but this particular version really doesn't require them. And then we come on to your colour schemes, one camo and one just overall dark yellow. I'm hoping to get some of the new Tamir acrylics for these camouflage colours. I've got the, the lacquer versions, but it's always fun to try out new paint. So I'm looking forward to trying out the acrylics on that and doing it in the, the tri-camo. As I say, you get a potted history in English and Japanese. Uh, that's, that's it. I hate to say that's it because that sounds slightly dismissive, but it is an utterly fabulous little model and one of the things i was doing this afternoon was going through my reference library here to see if i have any books or references on the kenton crag and the answer to that is no i don't so there's a very good one on ebay which is currently going for about a tenner there's also a rather nice i think it's either a czech or a polish book which is about 30 quid but i don't have a word of my conscience about that because I do like the subject, and I do have that stonking big old SE one night scale one to build at some stage. So I think, what do you think? Looking at the control room, they're, they're just shaking their heads in disbelief. Um, uh, Andy King says, yes, the original one had the trailer. I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is, uh, whilst we're here, I'm going to go to... Uh, 1999.com which is where i found uh bear with me a second dun, 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 i did find it on the web and see this is this is the thing about these pop-up lives is suddenly i go off on a tangent and we go to find a bit of information here but yeah i've i've got to put in an order for that uh, for that little monograph book and I think I might stump up the 30 quid for this other one as well because as I say it is a it is a subject that I do like and here we go uh, so bum ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. just call these images up list all images there we go let's just share the screen here for a second share screen bum ba -dum -ba -dum. chrome tab there we go. So as you can see, this is these are the instructions from the old Tamir kit, which actually included a few more decals in it than the uh, than the new one. But hey ho, um, yeah. There you can see that also included an engine, but that was a little bit more simplified than the one in this kit. There's the trailer, indeed. Solid screens for the engine deck cover there so you're not going to see any of that engine detail and the side pieces there are in one piece as well but hmm, this is the difference this is where we come down to it with the running gear as i said it's it was molded in one piece and then you just popped the little outer road wheels on and that's it so 
a uh, few more bits than I thought was involved in this one, but yeah, it was a considerably simplified kit ultimately. And as Andy King points out, yes, it did come with a trailer. Oddly, it doesn't show it on the uh, on the box art, but hey ho. Um, so that's our one for tonight. Um, Pavel Krupovich says, new Tamiya Red Brand 2 is a very rare colour, both lacquer acrylic. It's almost greenish. I decided to use the AK Real Colour one instead on my Stug. I used it on the... I'm going to say Hummel. Um, it's the other one. Was it the Hummel? Yeah, the, the Hummel, uh, year before last. Um, I don't remember being massively put off by it and i think i did use it on the sturm tiger that i built last year the little little the 35th scale literary sturm tiger and the 48 scale panther a uh, tamir panther but the thing is pavel by the time i've kind of chucked kind of fading and dust effects on it 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 kind of you know kind of doesn't bother me i think it's the best i think it's the most honest way of putting it but Interesting point. I'll keep an eye, can I keep an eye out for that when um, you know when I do get them. Actually, I might do a spray out to see how close the lacquer is to the um, oops, glasses wrong strain. How close the lacquer is to the acrylic and vice versa. So anyway, let's crack on, and we will crack on now to well something that. Italeri, a reissue of an old Eshi kit, and it, oops, Daisy, that's because I've got too many tabs open, and it is this. It's the Italeri reissue of the old Henshaw, uh, old Eshi Henshaw HS123. Now, I'm an, I'm an Eshi fanboy. I will never hide the fact that they were just a company that I, I loved to bits when I was a kid, and this will get built because this is one of their kits that has kind of haunted me down the years, going back to that original Target box art that they did. And so to actually kind of have one now, it's it's ticking a box to kind of like, you know, to, to, to build it, to actually get it out of the system. Bear in mind, this is an old kit. This is probably about 45 years old now, so you really don't get that many parts in the kit. It also has raised panel line details. The raised panel lines are rather neatly done. It does also have a, what can best be described as a sackcloth texture to the ribs here. And the ribs, as you can see from these uh, from the camera here, they are a little bit over the top, but it is of its time. You know, you it's let's put it this way. It's not going to stand comparison to the gas patch kit because you are looking at completely different eras and different tooling technologies and everything. But this is probably going to be a little bit easier to build than the gas patch kit and certainly a bit cheaper. And it, and it serves a completely different market. So, as I say, race panel lines, some of the uh, fabric detail, it's a bit, a bit on the heavy side. Fused large parts with the lower wing, which... Again, a little bit of texture on there. That's the engine. <laughs> you know, that's it. Uh, you can pose the cockpit open. And that's the last sprue. That is it in its entirety. Instrument panel is just flat, so that's going to be a decal. There's a rather basic seat there. Beyond that, there is no other detail molded inside the cockpit. We'll go through the instruction sheets in a minute. But in terms of construction, and that's the clear parts there, but I'm not going to take them out of the bag. In terms of construction, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to build this straight out of the box anyway. I should be able to get that pretty much kind of structured together in about two evenings, if I'm honest. The only bit that gives me pause for thought is the way they've moulded the cow in front and back halves because... Looking at reference photographs, there is no kind of panel join or anything along there. So that's going to involve some some cleanup to not only get rid of the join in between these, these rocker bulges, but also 
the actual seam line between the front and back halves. Hmm. We're going to have a think about that. But other than that, it's it's you know it's 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 a simple model. It's it's of its vintage. So I think if you go into this expected to be like the gas patch kit, no, it's not going to be like that at all. What this does have though is a fabulous decal sheet, which we'll come to in a minute. But if we just quickly whiz through the uh, the instructions again, and again, this emphasizes just how simple this model is. It's probably about the same number of parts here as there was to the Airfix Henshaw 123. So cockpit. Oh, you do get some side console bits. There we go. Decal for the instrument panel and for the seat straps, everything. That goes in there. Fuselage halves together. That's probably going to be about half an hour's work. And then engine in place trap the engine between the cows as i say you're going to have to have a look to see what that cleanup is going to be like drop the gun panel in place two wing halves together and then there you go you're you're, you're almost kind of rapidly heading towards priming and painting nice selection of bombs there i know there are accuracy issues with this kit as i say it is of a certain vintage however what is fabulous with this one is you do get a beautiful decal sheet and quite a few colourful options, including some in that fabulous splinter camouflage. So you get two iterations of Luftwaffe ones in, the, in that early camo. Then you get this one, which is rather interesting in as much as it's got a much higher demarcation line for the RLM 65 on the underside. There is this one, which hmm, I had I had pause for thought over this one because I did like the look of this. So this is a Chinese one. Very nice, but I I, I don't want to spend the rest of the year trying to do that paint job on it. So hmm, might pass on that one. Ah, look at this. So then we have two Spanish ones. One which is a one from the Spanish Civil War. I I love these color schemes and i love these markings it's it they just look fabulous um and this one has a little bit of nose art as well but but there is also this one in a post-war scheme and i i'll have to go and dig out my book later on to see if mike grant built the airfix one in a scheme similar to this but i do like this i just as a challenge to do the kind of matte and kind of like more polished metal parts on this. This appeals to me. It's going to be either this one or this one. I, my heart says I want to do this one, but my head is saying do this one. We shall see. We shall see. The deco sheet, he says, trying to get it out of the box. Of course, I'm going to get out of the box today. Fabulous. Nice and glossy. That's a lot of markings on there. As I say, you get the seat straps, you get the instrument panels, you get some stenciling. It looks fabulous. I mean, this is printed by Zanchetti, so, you know, they are as good as cartograph. I actually do find glossy decals tend to actually stick to <clears throat> glossy surfaces much better than ones with a kind of matte or a satin finish. So I'm not anticipating any problems with these whatsoever. They do provide the red tail band there so you can include your own <clears throat> in there and yeah absolutely fabulous whatever you use the leftovers will be a welcome addition to bits and pieces in the spares box so yeah i mean on face value you're probably thinking why bother with a vintage kit like that when there is obviously the far superior gas patch kit out there. Well, I've got one of these. And as I say, I'm a, I'm a bit of an Eshi fanboy. And this is one that I've wanted to make for years. It's not massively complicated in terms of rigging. Goodness me. I mean, there is virtually no rigging on that. There's some rigging on the interplane struts and the aerial. That's it. I, I'm a masochist. I want to see what I can do with that. So albeit straight from the box but it's an old eshi kit and it's good to have it back again so let's have a quick read through the comments um uh pavel says lacquer and acrylic these are the tamiya 
late uh, German Kaua colours are identical in this case. I have both. Excellent. Um, Andy says, uh, the first thing with the henschel is the seam line around the cowling. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how I'm going to do that. And, uh, and Paul Milligan says, seem to remember the two-part cowling look, look hard to look neat. Well, we like a challenge. <sighs> yeah, boy, we like a challenge. I'm going to have, I've got some reference books on the, the henschel. But hmm, we're going to see what we can uh, we'll do. It. Dave Murray has the absolutely the right select the right solution. Cover it in mud, absolutely. Very swiftly because I'm no I'm nowhere getting close to the uh, to the football tonight. Hurrah! So we're just going to rattle on with uh, two two more tonight, and we're going to save another one over for tomorrow evening. So. This, oops, this is a blast from the past for me. This is another old Eshi kit. I built this one when I was a kid. I built this one when I was about 12. I think I got it in the Tunisia diorama set that, that they did. And it's back. This old Eshi classic is back in an Italeri box. Very nice box. Up. Very nice packaging from Italeri, I have to say photographs of the model on the side and then on the back gives you some of the schemes which we'll come to in a while when this kit was released pretty much there were three small scale churchill kits that you could buy there was the airfix one which had about 100 million parts there was the Hasegawa one which is rather adventurously was a uh, an early variant and there was the Eshi one now where Eshi got it right and where the old airfix kit got it wrong is that the old airfix kit supplies all these road wheels as separate bits which you then have to trap between the bogies uh, yeah exactly it I tried building one about 20 years ago and honestly I just remember thinking the Eshi kit was easier. So here we are. The Eshi kit is back. A little bit of flash, a little bit of roughness on some of the, the mating surfaces here, but nothing, nothing massively untoward. As you can see, it is a really simple kit. That doesn't necessarily mean crude. It's just simple in the way that Italy, uh, Italy, in the way that Eshi looked at this subject and thought, hmm, we can do this in a more straightforward manner. Detail on this is still rather crisp, and bear in mind this is well over 40 years old. Joining these turret halves together, I think I'm going to check to see how much of that is going to get hidden by the turret basket. So there might be a little bit of seam cleaning to do, but nothing untoward. Certainly not as bad as that cowl on the henchel. And then we have the the side parts again, again with the the running gear moulded mercifully in place, and front of the mud guards rest of the upper hull lower hull a figure who he's okay he's could do with pulling his trousers up but that's that's it i mean it is it is literally that simple and i do have to build this one so i am looking forward to reacquainting myself with this then you get the rubber band tracks which not much detail on the inside, some quite nice detail on the outside, but seeing as with the Churchill, a lot of this is hidden anyway. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Let's crack on to the instructions. Oops, Daisy. And as you can see, this is so much easier than the Airfix kit. Um, you know, I had the Airfix kit as part of the D Day set back in 1974. Surprised I'm still making models after trying to put that thing together as a six-year-old. There we have putting together the hull and everything. And as you can see, this is something that comes together quite rapidly. Uh, yeah, I think I think for the most part, that seam you don't have to worry about because that glasses plate goes over that. And the rear part... Mm, Probably a little bit of a seam to join to, to deal with, but nothing major. So it doesn't look like it's going to represent any kind of really 
big problems. That's probably about the, the biggest seeming I have to deal with the fuel tank on the back. And that's interesting. Deep wading exhaust templates, they give you a template on how to make That's, well, that's interesting. That's kind of like they're explaining there how to create your own scratch-built parts for this model. Uh, I might be going down that route because the one that I will be doing is going to be that one. It's going to be the Desert Camo one. Because I promised myself whenever I, if ever I built this model again, I would build it in this scheme, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Get a rather nice one from Irish Horse. I mean, this one's got actually got the fewer number of decals. So, but nice, nice one there, and just overall drab. Rather nice Russian one, got to be said. That's you know vacillating on that one. The one with the most decals is this Canadian one from the D from the Dieppe raids. But mm, I'm not really in the mood to be doing scratch building, so. It's going to be that one. It's going to be that one. And what a fabulous decal sheet. Look at that. I mean, boy, oh, boy, what you don't use there will become very useful on other projects. And as I say, it's rather ironic. The one I want to do is the one that takes up the least amount of acreage on the, the decal sheet. Who knows? I may be persuaded to do another scheme, but that's what I've got my heart set on. And as I said, with these rubber band tracks, you can see that most of it's hidden. So... I'm not going to worry about the detail on them. So very nice to be reacquainted with this old kit again after 40 years. And I'm just trying to think. I think I've got an SG-1 up in the attic. But the one I've got up in the attic, I think it's the mine clearing one. I can't remember. Have a think about that. Anyway, let's play catch up on the on the comments. And uh, Dave Mummery says bonsoir. Um, blah 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 blah. No, we're all up to date. Jolly good. Right, quick swig of quick swig of the old tea, and then the final one for tonight. And this and this goes back to my youth. And what it is, it's the. Italy reissue of their classic Panzer IV H. Now, I have wanted to build this kit ever since I saw this advert in the December 1976 copy of Hornby Express magazine. A, a magazine that was so massively influential on me, this copy, is only one I've got, edited by Chris Ellis, a massively influential figure in my, you know, in my um, modeling development. And I've got somebody trying to ring me, but I'm just going to ignore that. Bear with, bear with. What it is to be popular, people. Anyway, what do you do on, on Tuesday night? I don't know. It just, it, he was rambling on about some old magazine and his phone went off. It's just, oh, you should see his ghost stories. They're worst. Yeah, this magazine, massively influential on me because Chris Ellis was a huge influence on, on me anyway. But uh, that was the first airbrush I got. And it was because of this advert and the fact that it was stocked in the local model, in the local model shop. And and this article as well. See that, that article. Uh, see a little bit of. Uh, I think they call it advertorial. Also, brilliant article here by Chris Ellis on converting the thirty fifth scale Italy Panzer One A, uh, sorry B, into an A conversion that I actually did following this article on the old Eshi kit. 72nd scale Eshi kit, which I entered into my first model competition and actually won a prize. And that was pretty much the only other model competition I ever entered. So I thought, well, quit while we're ahead. Um, and there are also oh, dragsters and things. And it's, oh, it's just a fabulous, fabulous 
piece of modeling history this anyway let's not go off on a tangent we will go back to that advert which is lost now oh. so anyway i remember seeing this italy advert and all all of this was just fabulously enticing especially uh, when you didn't have the money for it and you look back on it now and you think oh look at that, that panzer h two pounds thirty seems ridiculous but back then an absolute fortune but i all I, I always coveted this for some reason i don't know why i think it was because it it felt like a grown-ups model i was building kind of 70 second scale aircraft and things i wanted to build something the grown-ups were building and you know and here they were with their airbrushes and people were able to be able to afford these 35th scale tanks and i couldn't and especially here with all the 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 side armor on it and everything and the figures it felt utterly utterly exotic and just an impossible dream to actually own one actually managed to find i managed to find not only an original one at a model show a few years ago for a tenor but it was actually one in a ravel italieri boxing as well anyway let's fast forward 45 years later from this and we have Italeri have reissued it. Huzzah. And, well, they've reissued it with some goodies. Some goody goody gun drops. So, let us delve into this. First of all, you will notice there's a lot of plastic in this box, which is rather nice. And what makes up a lot of this plastic is that they give you the option of either glueable tracks or link and length slash individual track links. So what we have here are three, this sprue duplicated three times. So there we go, three times. Gives you all the tracks, gives you the, I think these are updated idlers running wheels and everything some and some other details and things which weren't in the original boxing so there's going to be a lot of leftover parts from this um which is always useful for the spares box and it's very nice that they have included the lincoln length tracks they have also included a set of glueable rubber band types as well now i was having a look at the the plastic ones and I had a look on the inside and there are tiny little ejection pin marks on these nothing on the outside thankfully but there are on the inside then I had a look at these and these don't have them and the detailed difference between the two is marginal However, as you may have noticed uh, in the past, I am a phenomenally lazy modeler. So I will be going the route of using these, using the plastic parts for some of the detail and some of the, the kind of the extras and the stowage. And the rest of those tracks will be going into the spares box. And, and I know you're all thinking, why aren't you, why aren't you using, why aren't you using the, uh, the link and length ones? They'll look better. We'll come to that. Um, Paul Milligan says, Love the Panzer IV H movable running gear, well detailed, much better than Tamper, than Tamiya Contemporary. Indeed, and I, funny enough, I do have the Tamiya Panzer G on its way. I, when I was told that a Panzer IV was in the box, I thought it was the Tamiya one. Didn't realize it was the, the reissue of the Italeri one, which I'm not bothered about because I've wanted to build this one for ages. So you can see my dance card is going to be really full for the next uh, month, a couple of months or so. So anyway, we'll come back to the tracks in a second. Then we get to the meat and potatoes of the hull part, which is all fairly straightforward. Again, for a kit of this age, and we're going back 45 years plus. Oops, Daisy. Always, always use, you always use a knife to remove the parts from the sprue. Don't do what I just did. This detail's still quite nice on this. There's a little bit of I can see a little bit of mold contamination there, but yeah, battle damage. 
but certainly the detail on the uh, the everything is crisp there's definitely a bit of uh, I don't know if I can see that definitely a bit of mold damage and wear there let me just tilt that up but it's on the underside but I'm going to worry about that rust it probably is actually it's probably actually rust on the uh, on the tooling but again you're coming into this knowing this is a kit of a certain vintage so we have the what we got there the idler wheels we've got more of the running gear there we've got the suspension drive sprocket a rear hull we've got some other little details there we do have some figures and it has to be said they are they're of their time they are a little bit cartoonish i think is the best way of putting it they're they're actually rather they're actually the 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 molding on them is actually really quite crisp and they are full of character they're a bit big i mean they're these are big lads probably about 132nd scale but Will I use them? Do you know what? Part of me says I should because they're in that advert and I really should go the whole experience and do the figures. But anyway, there's some nice weld detail around the edge of these uh, hatches as well. It's either weld detail or flame cuts, one or the other. But, you know, for a kit of this age, it's not too bad, actually. And there we got the rest of the bits and pieces here. We've got the anti-skid plate here on the mud guards and everything which is really nicely done some nice detail there on the drive fairings got some jerry cans rudimentary gun breech there i'm not going to worry about that because we're not going to look inside the gun breech uh, molded tow rope well that's that's what we've got to work with not seeing a lot of sink marks on this which is actually good for its age um, some mm, got some injection pin marks down there which may be visible on the finished model but you know what we can, we can hide that with mud uh, but other than that it's yeah doesn't look like it's gonna have, give me any problems and here we have the side the, the side armor again we've got a little bit of injection pin marks on the inside but these are flat surfaces so these will clean up no problem I'm just thinking. I'm thinking again. The most, the trickiest bit here, probably the trickiest bit of cleanup in this kit, is going to be two powers of these exhaust pipes. That's it. But I am going to build this with all the armor in place because that's what's on the advert. So, yeah, we're going to go for it. And it's a vintage utility kit, and I do like my vintage utility kits. So, let's quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, my Mac's going to go to sleep in a minute. Better plug it in. <sighs> Don't worry, folks. We're going to wrap this up in a second. We'll all go and watch the football. As you can see, there, well, there's quite a few bits that you're not going to use, which is welcome to the spares box. So, assembly of the running gear, which that's going to be probably an, e an evening or two's work in doing all the cleanup and everything, but. Uh, so one of the things, if you're building anything from the Panzer IV family, you're going to have to get used to liking wheels. But I think there's a there's a speedier method for painting them, and I think that might be to paint the wheels a dirty black-brown colour, then make some masks from the silhouette cutter, and then just spray the centres. We'll come to the colour schemes in a minute. Also, just very quickly, it does speed up does speed up clean up considerably if you join the wheel halves together and then clean them up in one go rather than trying to clean them up individually i know it sounds kind of like obvious but hands up all those who did that before realizing they could have done it a much quicker route exactly um and then we come to the exhaust at the rear then we've got the options of either lincoln length tracks or the rubber band tracks well, I'm going for the rubber bands, and I'll explain my thinking very, very shortly. Rest of the hull, the air intakes, filters, whatever you call them, blah, 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 all very straightforward, all very familiar from having built that um, 
that's to me a D earlier in the year. So the breakdown of this is slightly different, but you know, all kind of ends up in the same place ultimately. There's all your pioneer tools and external storage, exhaust. Now, and then we come on to the side armor here, which quite frankly, as we will see in a moment, is going to cover pretty much most of what you can see of those tracks, which is why I'm going to go the easy route and do the uh, do the link and length. Now we come to this. Look at this. A metal gun barrel. Which is a nice touch. Albeit, you've still got this two-part brake, muzzle brake to put on there, but hey-ho. And then hatches, blah, 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 blah then the turret armor, and then that's it. And then you've got the figures, which he, he is, he's got a stick. I don't know what he's doing with the stick anyway. Um, so there's, there's our figures. Then we have our four schemes. Now we have this one, which is the box art one, which is, that's going to be airbrush tastic. I think it's the best way of putting that. Then we have one in three-tone camo with all the side armor, which looks fabulous. Then we have this one in overall sand, which I kind of like the look of, but doesn't use all the side armor. Oh, the side skirts, rather. Then we have this one in the winter camo, which uh, I'm, I'm kind of angling towards because it's kind of like winter camo and chipping and weathering and all that nonsense. But is it true to the spirit of that advert? Then we have this one, which I really like, a Spanish one. Uh, I, I really do like the look of this, but it, it only uses the turret armor, doesn't use the full armor. So I get the funny feeling it's going to be this one ultimately, because if we kind of go back to that advert, it's kind of kind of that really, isn't it? Ish eight two five. Actually, I think it's the same tank. Almost the same tank. So, decisions, decisions, but some nice colour schemes there. And it's a very nice decal sheet as well, which, as you can see, again, beautifully printed. This is by Zanchetti. It's glossy, which isn't going to be a problem if you're putting down layers of varnish. And what you don't use is very welcome on other projects. So, yeah. Oh, decisions, decisions. But it is nice to kind of like this. This is almost like catching up with my childhood to, uh, with these projects because certainly the old, well, I think all four of them actually. The Cat and the Crowd, I built the Tamir Cat and Crowd as a teenager. I built the Eshi Churchill when I was a teenager. I wanted to build the Italeri Panzer IV as a kid. And I would have liked to have built the Henschel one, two, three as a kid as well, because it was always in the model shops. So I've seen that in that kind of target box with the target site on it. Couldn't afford it, but it just seemed fabulous, fabulously exotic. Um, but anyway, there we go. We've, we do have some more stuff to preview as well, but we'll probably keep that for tomorrow night's show. So that's it for tonight. We're going to end this nonsense. That was just a quick pop-up show, quick 50 minutes, a quick pop-up show to kind of go through, some of these uh, things that have turned up here and we will be taking photographs and putting them up on the timeline as well so other than that it just remains to say thank you for watching you've been very patient uh and as i said earlier on uh martin kovac all the best for a speedy recovery and try and stay out of trouble and to you all please try and stay out of trouble and we will see you tomorrow night for the midweek show so from here in a Sunny Somerset. It's good night. Good night.